Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to show you how to set up your electric furnaces and the old furnaces with the conveyor system for the secret update, better known as the industrial update, happening for us probably by the time you're watching this over on testing staging branch, but this will be out on main branch rust, also known as normal rust, by the end of August 2024. And we are talking about rust console edition for the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, next generations, and everything in between. And I'm Jade Monkey. All right, so we got a lot to cover here but it's super cool that you can have these electric furnaces uh, no wood option just with power and uh, that we can also use the old system and then still connect things with this piping system that makes it even more OP and over the top so you can make this as complex as you want to be or as simple as you want it to be obviously both these look pretty complex but you could just run these on straight electricity if you wanted to so without further ado let's break it down so to find this bad boy yes you can find that out in the wild but this is a workbench 2 item so, in order to get that, obviously you would need to throw that on the research bench for 75 scrap with the item. Then you'll get the blueprint. Then once you have it, or you can go through the tech tree if you want to through your workbench. But once you have it, you can craft this on a level 2. It costs 5 high quality and then a 200 metal fragments. It does take 3 units of power to run, making this extremely cheap. And yes, you don't need to add all the extra bells and whistles. You can literally run this bad boy off of a solar panel facing northeast, a car battery, and I would suggest a switch, but you can connect it right to the furnace itself, and you can just move things in and out manually just to get started. So like you can scale up slowly if you want to. Um, you can start to add more if you want to. So it really off the rip, it's fantastic. You can use it almost immediately. It's just one of those level two things. But hey, if you find it in the wild, you can just slap it down and start using it right away. So, not to be uh, overshadowed, but there are other items with this update to make things even more OP, the industrial part of this update. And these pieces include the storage adapter, as the name would suggest, uh, the conveyor, the combiner, the splitter, and the industrial crafter. We won't cover this in this video here, but just know that there are two sockets for this on the top and also on the workbench area, and this attaches to all of the workbenches in those same locations. Uh, yes, that means you can auto-craft things. Yeah, crazy. All right, so the breakdown for these bad boys, actually, to find these, uh, most of this is actually in level one. If you go over to the tech tree here, and they're very, very affordable. Obviously, uh, it's this whole line here, so you start with switch, battery, solar panel and then these are the components down here and all of these cost 20 scrap totally affordable so really the only thing in the chain here is the solar panel but you can always get that at the outpost if you really want to all right so we're going to show you a basic rundown of how this works and then we'll show you some different examples all right so uh as the name would suggest oh yeah by the way <laughs> you need a pipe tool to connect these things very similar to your wire tool just it's a uh, thicker wire as it were and it moves items but you've got two uh, slots out here on your storage adapter that you can place on top of boxes or other furnaces or what have you uh, clearly if you want to move things from this side from the purple side to the yellow side this is going to be the input on the conveyor so you would uh, attach a storage adapter to the top of the container find the output connect it to a conveyor and then the output of the conveyor gets plugged into the storage adapter industrial in so this is the start this is the finish so as the name would suggest, the conveyor moves things between two items. Uh, it does require one unit of power. Let me go ahead and show you some of the different attachment points here. Uh, one unit of power, it does have a pass-through, making it very easy to wire up when you need to. And some other uh, slots here to uh, turn it on, turn it off, and some conditions whether or not the filter is running or not running. So uh, we'll, we have like a minor example of this later on here. So uh, just know that it can really uh, step up the type of sophistication for this. But if you hold the action button on this bad boy, you can see you have filter options. You can type in individual items, so fragments. Uh, you can do rounds or even blueprints for those rounds, whatever. But more to the point, you can do giant categories like clothing or ammo. Yeah, crazy, right? You can have them say, okay, just require all of these things before you start to transfer or exclude these items. And you can also go in here and adjust max, buffer, and min. So you can really have a granular effect on this. Like, hey, only move this when you have a full stack, so on and so forth. But what's really great is off the rip, this bad boy will move everything by default. So this is your start container. We have a bunch of random stuff here. Uh, some things are solo stacked, some things are multi-stacked. 
and then we have the container. So literally all we have to do is this has power. We just hit the on button and things are going to move from here. I think almost all at once. No, actually these stacks will go slowly. So we've got the first uh, pass here and it's being moved over. So you can see that slowly over time it'll start to vacuum these out. Awesome, right? So you're probably thinking, hey, I can use this to feed my furnaces. You are a thousand percent correct. So let's go over here and show you a basic setup with the old school furnaces. So as we said before, from your start box to the furnace, you're going to have a conveyor. And then uh, pulling things out of the furnace, you're going to have another conveyor and then a storage box to throw those items in. Here we have uh, wood, uh, raw metal, and raw sulfur because obviously this furnace doesn't take power. It just takes uh, wood itself. So to get this started, we're just going to take, or obviously we're going to attach the storage adapter, obviously. We're going to take the pipe tool. By the way, if you hold like, would it be running? So would it be pushing in your thumbstick or maybe one of the triggers or maybe one of the bumpers? You can actually um, hold that as a modifier key and then you're uh, attaching to the surface of an object uh, if you so desire. Same rules as placing pipes, or I'm sorry, uh, cables that go with pipes. Um, also, if you hold the reload key, pick a color, go up to the node, and then hit the reload key one more time, you can color the pipe itself. If you hold right trigger, you're going to clear all of it if you so desire. Or you can just go like a direct connection like this. So what's going to happen here is uh, basically everything that's going to go in the furnace is already uh, checked out here. So we don't have to filter anything. We just run this bad boy. Oops, and let's put our storage adapter on top of our container here. I should say furnace, and then have this go into the input. So when we turn this on, it's going to actively take, whoops, oh, it helps if I turn on the power. It's actively going to take things from this container and move them into the furnace. It is smart enough to know where things go for the most part. So you can already see here it's loading up sulfur and the metal fragments here, so and also the wood. Uh, by the way, as this fills up, let me go over here and show you the different positions for these storage adapters. For the large box, you have four left, right, uh, face, and then also the top, but not the back. So four locations. Small box has two, uh, top and also the side facing you. And for our good friend, the electric furnace, there's only two slots, the left and then the face. So yes, very odd shape, so uh, kind of keep that in mind. So I'm going to say uh, when it's facing you, when the grills are facing you on the electric furnace. Good to know. And the old furnace, the standard furnace, only has one slot on the very, very top. All right, so it doesn't take, t uh, there we go, doesn't take too long before this is fully loaded. So what we can do is start to turn this on. Ooh, that's pretty. And while that's cooking, we can also finish up the wiring here. We can go down here and then connect this to the input. Let's go ahead and color this, I don't know yellow and then this conveyor will pull things out based off of the conditions uh, we're just going to make this very basic we don't have to do much uh, by the way our power here uh, we just took one unit of power it goes into the input our pass through here then passes it to this conveyor as long as you see a light green or red here it has enough power to run so currently this is vacuuming things out of this side actually let me just go ahead and do this click things are getting vacuumed out of this container via this uh, conveyor this conveyor is selecting uh, what items to push through, which is all of them. It goes into this object here, which is just cooking materials. And when that's done uh, in the output, things from here are vacuumed out via this container. Or I'm sorry, not container, but uh, conveyor into this container here. So once we turn this on, it should take everything out of this container and put it into our box. And you can actually see a little animation there on the face. Now, there will be some subtle changes for us over on the console side. Obviously, the interface will be slightly adjusted in our categories for like selecting things, but for the most part, the core idea is the same. So you can already see right here with just two units of power, a conveyor, some storage adapters, you've already got some automation happening with your just basic furnace. By the way, uh, these objects here are either the cost of a code lock or less. So it's either 100 metal fragments or 75. In most cases, I think these are generally 75 metal fragments to actually craft so it's not too bad in a level one workbench. Most people have that in like the first 20 minutes, obviously. So right here, you can see super cheap, level one workbench. You don't need anything above this. You can still use the old school furnaces and you're cooking. You can leave the base and it can be fueled the entire time. Fantastic. Okay, so let's do the same thing over here for these. In this case, we're gonna use the electric furnace, but also show you these different conditions for the uh, filters. So in this case, we're gonna pull things 
like uh, this. So uh, for our conveyor here, we're going to have it just say, okay, let's just grab ore, raw metal ore, and be very specific about it. So we don't want it to pull in things like wood. Uh, okay, so this furnace is already wired up, and we have these two conveyors here. Let's go ahead and just drape across the connecting piece for this pass-through to this guy. So they're both powered, and we'll stick our storage adapters on top here. We'll stick our uh, furnace adapter here in the front. I, I typically like it in the front. <laughs> that sounds bad. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make <laughs> we're going to connect it over here. Man, that's nasty. The industrial output is going to go up to this conveyor. This conveyor is going to drop down to the floor. Oops, we're going to erase that, sorry. Drop down to the floor, and it's going to be fed into this furnace like so. Then we're going to take the output from here, and then pipe it into this input. So what's crazy is... Uh, actually, yeah, I think we can turn this one on. Oops, not yet. Oh, it helps if we turn on the main power. Hello. So, uh, nothing's being fed in here quite yet because we didn't turn these on, even though they have power. So, uh, we've got to finish this up here. This is going to be connected to the input of this box. So, hopefully, if we did everything correctly, we're going to move things that are cookable here, uh, just the items that we do want through the filter, and then dump it out the other side. So, in this case, we're going to do things like sulfur in there, but, like, we don't want it to be cooked. So, we're going to be very specific about it. So, uh, we already kind of put the condition up which is just uh, metal fragments, right? Yep, okay, great. So what we can do is turn this on and it's just gonna grab those items. Cause really for the power of these electric furnaces, you want these two slots to be active. Uh, this slot has to be totally filled up and then this one will go up and then every time you cook is gonna be two at a time, which is a time saver galore, believe you me. So once that's getting pushed through, actually you can see right here, uh, this is a, the, an example of using the pass fail filter. So I put a green cable here to show you that it's currently active. So the conditions have been met here, so it's green. When the conditions fail or they're done, or none of the condi conditions can be met, it'll turn red. So you can already start to see, like, this can also trigger another item. This can trigger another conveyor, making things a lot more sophisticated. And over here, uh, we should have a fail condition. Actually, I think it's just pulling everything out, isn't it? It is. So in this case, actually, did we pull everything over in this? Oh, no, it's just metal. So here we can say, you know, actually, yeah, we can just leave it uh, open. <laughs> it's, it's always going to be that. But these different conveyors, when they run into a fail condition, is a good way to send this, uh, this red line signal over back into your circuit to turn off your furnace automatically, which is very, very useful. We're not going to do that here, but this is just kind of showing you the basic setup for what we're doing for the electric furnace. And it doesn't take much. So we're only pulling the metal fragments, or I'm sorry, metal ore. We're leaving things like sulfur alone. But if we wanted to, we could go here in real time and then add things like the sulfur ore if we so desire. Let me just type in sulfur. Bingo. So now that we have that there, as soon as these slots open up, sulfur will start to pop in on that side. Or it should. Well, it will eventually. There we go. So it's starting to pop in. So as things are being cooked and they're done, they get moved through here and then put into this finisher box. And we can put this metal fragments back here and then it'll just bring it into the system when it's good and ready to go. There you go, a basic example of conveyor system for the electric furnace. We're going to show you a bit more advanced, but something you know, not, not too crazy, but we're going to show you a cluster here. We're going to do one cluster of three. Then we're going to show you how to connect another cluster of three together and show you also how you don't necessarily need a conveyor for each of these interactions here for each of these furnaces. You could just have this uh, conveyor here be your input for all of these furnaces and then this conveyor here done uh, pulling all of the cooked material from all of these furnaces and putting it into the box. So essentially we're starting with raw materials here and feeding them into all of the furnaces here, all six of them and then having the cooked material end up here just using two conveyors. Same idea as before, uh, we've just got this split up into two blocks. And once you kind of learn this modular approach, you can start to stack things into larger groups like this. Uh, this is a nine furnace setup in a one by one half, half high. And this can cook 18,000 metal fragments in an hour and 10 minutes, a little bit under an hour and 10 minutes. That's crazy and it uses just under 30 power units crazy like look boom yeah you're cooking 
so you can have a whole another tray of this above. So you can have 19. I'm sorry. Is that right? Yeah, 18. Jeez, I was like, 9 times 9? No. 9 plus 9? 18. Okay, so let's get these bad boys going. Let's go ahead and wire this up here real fast. We're just going to do red cables to get in the back of these uh, furnaces. By the way, the furnaces have been simplified to just single slots here. If we uh, by chance have the multiple slots in our version, for whatever reason, they're just like on and off switches and stuff. They're more trouble than they're worth. I can see why they condensed it down to just uh, power. It makes more sense. Okay, so what's cool here is you can actually daisy chain these together. It's actually really smart. You can take just this, uh, by the way, this conveyor is uh, going out from this position, going into this splitter, and then uh, dumping it into this splitter's input, and same thing down here. So we could connect these all individually like so, but you don't have to. Um, it is smart enough to know, like you can just daisy chain them together. So like you could do it like this, and there may be some reasons that you want to do uh, it like that. But in this case, we're just going to take one pipe, and bring it down to the floor, to the floor, to the floor, and connect it here. Then we can take the output and put it in here, and put it in here. So you can start to see, actually, let me just take uh, metal again, or, oh, you know what? We need to wire these up too, don't we? Boo, I didn't do that already. What am I doing? Oh, no, I did. It just wasn't powered. Okay, so in this case, <laughs> my bad. In this case, we're going to uh, connect the pipe source. Oh, by the way, any time you place these, if there's any obstruction or the entryway or gap or whatever isn't big enough for the pipe, it's going to be blocked. So just keep that in mind. So what's happening here is we're going to turn this on. It's just going to grab the metal fragments and you can start to use metal fragments, metal ore, and it's going to start to dump it in here. So you can see that it's doing it evenly across, even though we have them daisy chained down here. Something to, you know, keep note of. So it looks crazy, but it's actually not too bad, right? Right. All right, so we'll do the same thing over here. We'll place more storage adapters here in the front. We'll daisy chain the front of this with, I don't know, yellow. And what we'll do is this will feed the same idea. We're going to shut this off here for a second. This is, uh, we can take this split here and actually put it all the way across and connect it to our cluster over there. I'm just going to try to follow these little lines in the tile because I'm a freak. By the way, I didn't mention this earlier, but this whole thing can be run, furnaces and all, off of four solar panels and a medium battery. These can get purchased at the outpost, and this can be purchased at BC. All very um, accessible, especially if you don't have the tech trash. You can just buy these outright when you need to, scale up slowly, because let's not forget, you can run this on one solar panel if you want to. So right here, uh, these furnaces are going to be active over here. And, uh, yeah, I think it's going to feed all of these. Oh, yeah, I turned off the conveyor. Whoops. So even though these are on and these aren't, these should also be fed more material. I think it's going to take a second, if I'm not mistaken. There we go. Slowly but surely. And what's cool is we can turn this on now. These furnaces are cooking, and then we can start to sort out how we're going to do the exit for this or the, uh, the sorting for the back end of this. So like I said, you can connect these all individually if you so desire. Uh, here, let me just give you a good example real fast. So you can actually take it here and then actually wire it in like this and still have it uh, go out to individual pieces. Just to show you that there's a difference because in some cases you may want to have a conveyor that feeds these individually because there are uh, like valid reasons for that. And you'll see later on once you're doing like bigger operations, you'll go, oh, okay, that's what Jay was talking about. But yeah, you know. So in this case, we can take the feed off of here, which is yellow, or it was. So this is going to take the materials that are going into the furnace itself. You can see why we kind of did a more simple, <laughs> simplified version of this, because it starts to look crazy. But honestly, once you load this up in like Builder's Paradise the first time and like run it, you go, okay, it's not too bad. Uh, so actually, what's happening here is these are still being fed, or they should be. There you go. Is it going up or is it going down? I know why it's not going up, because I think we're done feeding it. Yeah, we totally maxed it out. Crazy. Anyways, it'll feed it. And then what's cool here is you can actually pipe all of this together if you so desire. So in this case, we'll just pipe them up like this. 
I'm trying to make this fast, I'm sorry. <sighs> and the exit for this will be out on an orange. So what we can do is we can just pipe this down. Actually, let me start with this. So I, I'm so OCD with the organization of this. I don't know why, but I just gotta be. So you can see each individual furnace is being fed into a combiner here. And then you can feed it up to this item here, which is another combiner. And then this is being fed into the conveyor, and this conveyor is being fed to the box over here. So in theory, you can just turn this on, and all these cooked materials are going to start moving over to this box itself slowly but surely. Actually, did we connect them all yet? Probably not. There we go. That's just from this cluster. We have to connect the output of these guys now to our other uh, cluster that we have. So let's go ahead and still make that. Is that purple? Is that what this is? So we're going to take this here, and I think we'll just run it up the wall uh, around the frame. That might be best. By the way, if you're seeing these cables that are dangled here, I don't know if we'll have that in our update or whatever, but it took me forever to like find out it was real. And then it took me forever to figure out like how it actually works. But um, if we do have it on the console side, it's actually uh, pretty cool. So right now you can see that this output here, this piping, uh, this cluster. Actually, let's make this like orange. So the orange cluster is from here. The purple cluster is from over here. So we have this huge amount of uh, resources that we can cook at the same time. These are only doing three per. So this is why three times three is what? Uh... 9 to 12? 12? No, yes? 12? No, 9? 3 times 3? 9? Uh, uh, yeah, so we got the cooking power here. We're not using too much power for all of this. And anything that's being cooked is being transferred to this box. So we can actually kick things up even further, and we can have this uh, do things like uh, sulfur, as we said before. And it's going to, whoops, it's going to bring things over here. And if we have room, and we should, there we go. It's starting to cook the sulfur, and everything's being transferred back to this main box. So you can see, you can make this as complex or as simple as you want to be. I would strongly suggest starting off in a modular form. I, as I said prior, try loading in the Builder's Paradise and just doing a simple circuit like this. Because honestly, just having this and doing it manually is still a major win. Cooking with electricity is the best. So there you go. That's how you set up your own electric furnace for Rust Console Edition. Uh, it should be on testing branch by the time you're watching this, as I said earlier. But again, it's only going to take a month for this to hit uh, main branch, which is at the end of August 2024. Uh, while you're out there making uh, piping systems and electric furnaces, uh, I might I suggest a tugboat guide that's going to help you get that juicy loot to feed into your base. It should already be up on the end screen now. It'll show you how to find them, uh, despawn them, raid them, everything you need to know for tugboats. All right, so hopefully we'll see you in the next one, guys. Uh, love you. Bye. Oof, oof.